next Splatoon 3 season is right around the corner, and it can be pretty overwhelming to figure out what you should be doing until it drops. The first Splatoon 3 season ends on November 30th at 7pm Eastern Standard Time, but I'm gonna make this video super generic so it'll work even for the future. So let's go. Here's 10 ways to prepare for the next Splatoon 3 season. First of all, we can't forget to address the catalog. You want to figure out a plan to complete the catalog if you haven't done so yet. Take a look at how many days are left and divide the number of catalog levels you want by the number of days. For example, if you're a level 80 and there are 7 days left and you, you really want to finish that whole thing, you'll need 3 levels a day. To make this a little easier on yourself, remember that you get almost a free level up from your first win of the day via the 7500 point bonus. Every catalog level requires 9,500 points to complete. The slowest way to get your catalog level up is going to be in Salmon Run, so stick to Turf War or Ranked to level up faster. The second thing you'll want to do? Go shopping. I mean this pretty literally. Make sure you're going to the shops every single day. Checking out the hats, checking out the shirts, checking out the shoes, and of course also going to Dear Sweet Harmony to buy items for your locker. After the patch hits, there's going to be more stuff in the shops than before. Some people, for completionist's sake, might want to see those shops be completely sold out prior to the patch hitting. For some people, they just want to check every day so they can continue leveling up your gear. Remember that you can use the shops to add star power to your gear, meaning that your gear can have more slots on it. That's pretty important if you want to use your gear to its best when you're playing in Ranked or Turf War. But with all that gear in your inventory, we have to move to number three, checking out the gear and the abilities that you have on your gear. By having more gear in the game, you'll have more options on what gear you want to use ability-wise as well. Maybe you'll have more options for swim speed clothes. Maybe you feel like you don't have enough swim speed clothes right now. Whatever your problem is, new gear is a way to fix that. But you want to go through what you currently have first, that way you know what you're looking for when the new gear drops. Remember that you can use chunks to be able to update your gear and change it around. To do this, you'll have to speak to Merch who can change your main or sub abilities on your gear in exchange for chunks. However, in order to be able to do this, you need to get those chunks from somewhere. So how do you check how much chunks you have? You have to open up the menu and take a look. Assessing what chunks you do and don't have enough of is very important and actually sneaks in as number four on this list. <laughs> For some people, they may do the opposite of spending all their chunks right at the end of the season. They might want to hold on to those chunks until the new season starts. That way they can get a jump on making brand new gear that looks really cool. <laughs> Although it isn't aesthetically pleasing, spreading your triples along your gear instead of putting it all on one hat, one piece of clothing, or one shoe is a great way to save chunks. It costs 10 chunks for every unique ability that you add on to a piece of gear. If you want to add on that ability again, it costs another 20 chunks. And if you want to add it a third time, it costs 30. So if you spread out those abilities across all three pieces of gear, instead of paying 10 and then 20 and then 30 to have that triple, you can just spend 10 and 10 and 10. That way, you can make double the triples across more gear instead of just burning it all on one piece of gear. But let's take a step back to collecting those chunks in the first place. Make sure that you're doing your daily Salmon Run. When you play Salmon Run, you have the opportunity to get a whole bunch of chunks. And how, you ask? Well, um, from the gear that Mr. Grizz gives you. If you're not accepting all of it, you're probably trading a lot of it in for chunks. In Splatoon 3, it seems like you can't trade the gear for money, at least not yet, that could change sometime in the future. Instead, you always get chunks. It only takes a game or two of Salmon Run to get a brand new, fresh piece of gear with abilities on it. Salmon Run is by far the fastest way to get chunks in the game. You can also get chunks by wearing gear and then scrubbing it, which does work. You can also get chunks by simply playing a lot of Turf War or Ranked and leveling up your gear a whole lot of times. But Salmon Run is going to be the fastest way to obtain more chunks. And while you're at it, you might as well fight that Koazuna. That's so you can hoard more scales and have your inkling look even cooler for Big Run. Ooh, Big Run! Okay, okay. Last thing about gear. 
for number six. I want to talk about how easy it is to set up a bunch of gear with higher star power and then leave it alone. You go into your inventory and you realize, oh no, I have a lot of gear that just is here with a bunch of question marks. When you start buying new gear from the new season, it might get overwhelming seeing all that gear unfinished. Maybe you want to take some time to throw yourself into turf war or ranked and just level up some of that gear so it isn't all empty. And I know, I know, you're on a time crunch here. You gotta make sure that with the little time you have left in this season, you go ahead and use your time appropriately while leveling up that gear. Why not use some weapons that you have not raised the freshness yet of? That way, you can get your hands on extra Sheldon licenses. Remember that the first level up for every weapon will get you a Sheldon license. And on top of that, you could keep on going. When you get to the second level of a weapon, you get a sticker for your locker. When you get to the third level for a weapon, you get the holographic sticker for your locker. Woo! When you get to the fourth level, you get the badge for your splash tag. And at the fifth level, you get an even fancier badge. If you've been desiring to experiment with other weapons, getting to like the second or third stage is a great way to feel a little bit of completion in the game. But maybe instead of doing that, you'd actually like to practice for the weapons that are going to be added in the game in the next patch. Well, there's a great way to do that. Practice weapons that are similar to the ones you want to try in the next patch. It doesn't matter if the main weapon is similar or if the kit is similar. Maybe you're not very experienced with splat bombs, but a weapon that's being added does have them. Maybe you're really interested in that Forge Splattershot Pro with the old suction bomb booyah bomb combo. <laughs> you could either practice with the original Splattershot Pro, or you could go ahead and try a weapon that has booyah bomb, like the sloshing machine or the Hydra Splatling. Maybe you want to get better at positioning your suction bombs on the tower planning out where to throw them in front of the Rainmaker, figuring out what spots you can throw a suction bomb onto that opponents don't really think about, like random walls. Now is a great time to practice that before the weapons come out. All this pre-patch playing for practice will be worth it too. Remember, if you want to go into X rank for the next season, you have to be at least S plus 10. Why is that? Because any player that wants to play in X rank has to be at least S plus zero. But at the end of the season, every player is going to drop ranks. You might wonder why this is necessary. And part of it is the poor innocent players that are in the negative thousands of points right now in their rank. <laughs> you don't want them to stay there, right? Besides that, this natural drop in rank will help out that so players aren't still in S+, for example, after not playing the game for like two years, which is a problem that did happen in Splatoon 2. You'd have people take a break from the game for years, come back, and be completely overwhelmed because they're thrown immediately into a rank that they're no longer really able to play in because they're not practiced. Any player that's above S plus 10 will be brought back down to S plus 0. Any player in S plus 0 to 10 is being brought down to S rank. Otherwise, you'll drop two ranks. And last but not least, just, just have fun. Your Splatoon experience is unique. If you can't finish the catalog, that's okay. You'll have a fresh new catalog and a whole three months to work on it. You might be excited for different weapons, different gear, or even different mechanics returning to the game than your friends. Everyone can still be happy about the changes together. A balance patch means that something that you like might end up getting buffed or nerfed. Even if your favorite weapon gets nerfed, it doesn't mean you have to drop it. I mean, take it from me. The sloshing machine peaked pretty early in Splatoon 2's lifetime, and I still played that bad boy all the way until the game ended. And then I ended up winning because sloshing machine's really good in Splatoon 3. Whee! One of the funniest parts of balance patches is going into ranked after the servers reopen and seeing everyone and their brother playing the new things from scratch. If my first match post-patch isn't almost entirely brand new weapons, uh, I'll be shocked. Here's to a brand new season and a great time in Splatoon 3. I'll surely be trying out the new features and covering what changes with the updates, so please subscribe to enjoy more Splatoon 3 goodness in the future. Thanks for listening, and have a good one.